Hey guys, welcome back. We're doing a September wrap-up today. I really hate long intros, so we're just gonna get right into it. First book that I read in September was The Last Magician, and I gave this one 4.5 stars. I actually did a reading vlog for this, so I will link above and then in the description so you guys can go watch it if you want. But essentially, I almost see enough of this book because the beginning was very slow, but it worked its way up to a 4.5 for me. But like I said, I don't want to get into too much about this since I did do the reading vlog, so if you're interested in hearing more, you can go check out that video. If you follow me on Instagram, you might have seen this post that I did about book American Panda. I was talking about how I realized I don't really intentionally read characters of different backgrounds than myself. I know that's something that's all over Twitter, all over booktube about, you know, why we need diverse reads, and I agreed with it, but then I never really implemented it in my own life. So uh, I picked up American Panda as a conscious effort to um, pick characters that are different than myself and have different backgrounds and upbringings and all of that. There are a few things that I really liked about this book. Um, the main character is a germaphobe, which is even more funny because she's um, trying to go to school to become a doctor. <laughs> but I personally related to that on like a whole other level because when, when I was in a sorority, we did like these superlative um, awards, and I got germaphobe. It's like you could write in anything, and that's what my friends chose <laughs> to write to describe me. So, yeah. And also the main character was a dancer. I used to dance all the time and so that also um, made me really happy to see in book. I also thought this book did a good job at showing different families of Asian descent. So we have um, some where the main character, her parents are direct immigrants, but then we have another family where um, the parents aren't, but they're still Asian. So it was interesting to see like, So it was interesting to see that and I read a few reviews on Goodreads afterwards and some people were saying like the main character situation was so drastic and that's not a good representation of um, Asian American families but I think the author really did try to show like I mean there was like four or five other examples and I think where the author could have maybe gone a little bit further was maybe give us a point of view from one of those other um, families because to see that from just the main character's point of view where it was so drastic it's like well wait is that what it's like for everybody and so I think if there was a second point of view from somebody that didn't have such an intense um, home life maybe that would have helped a little bit. And I really don't know what to give this for star rating, so I'm just gonna say three stars because that's middle of the road. I didn't absolutely love it, like I don't think I would reread it, but I also didn't think it was bad. So three stars, maybe 3.5, but yeah, somewhere in the middle. Then contemporary thon happened and I actually participated, I just posted updates on my Instagram. And the first book that I read for that was Far From The Tree. That's by Robin Benway. She also wrote Emmy and Oliver, which I loved so much. Far From the Tree, I gave four stars, mostly because from the middle to the end it was really good, but I will warn you that the beginning was just a little bit slow. But I did like that there's three point of views. First point of view is from a character that just had a baby, she's in high school, and we find out that she's adopted. So then the second point of view is her biological sister. Third point of view is the biological half-brother. And the story is about all of them meeting, So, but I just thought it was great because you get to see point of view from not only somebody who's given up a baby for adoption but then also from somebody that was adopted and the three main characters have all very different experiences with adoption and foster homes and all of that so it was very interesting i personally love the show the fosters on freeform um, so if you're a fan of that show you should definitely check out this book because it had the same vibes it had very similar themes and it was just really good there was also lgbtq plus representation but there wasn't really that much. It was like one of the main characters um, was in a relationship kind of on and off. So I would say it wasn't like the best representation, but it was in there. So next, we're going to get into a thriller that I read because for Contemporary Thon, one of the challenges was read a dark contemporary. And little did I know, I had a bunch of dark contemporaries on my TBR. So I picked a thriller <laughs> on top of that. I ended up reading this book called Emma in the Night. It's an adult thriller and I gave it three stars. So you look at this cover and you think like, wow, this is about a girl that's coming home after being missing for like five years. She's gonna come out of the woods and it's gonna be really creepy and foggy and... No. It was really not creepy at all. Like a little bit when there, she's describing things that happened on the island um, where she was missing for a while, but it really wasn't as thrillery as I thought it would be. 
I guess the thing I would compare to the most is probably Sharp Objects, which is now, um, I think it was Gillian Flynn wrote the book and then now it's on HBO. And I watched a few episodes of that. That is creepy though. But um, it kind of had similar vibes and um, that's what I would compare it to if you like that show. But the ending just really wasn't that surprising and I didn't really like the main character. The mom was a nut job, so I just kind of, the whole thing was a wash for me, unfortunately. The next book I read, I don't know if it was just good timing or what, but it's probably going to be my favorite book of the entire year. And the book I'm talking about is Girl Made of Stars. I'm giving this five stars, I'm giving it ten stars. It was just so good. It's about this girl who is a twin, and her best friend is dating her, her twin brother. And they are at a party, they're getting drunk, and then the next day, the best friend says that her, that the main character's twin brother raped her. I think that right there was just so interesting because we have the twin brother who she's obviously really close with, it's like an extension of herself, who apparently did this terrible thing, so she's trying to come to terms with that. And then we have um, the best friend, so obviously she wants to believe her best friend too. And there's also one other piece of um, something that happened that she has experienced and that makes her even more emotionally involved in this situation. I'm trying not to give anything away. I was reading it during the same time that I was watching the trials for the Kavanaugh trials. Um, I was literally like, the book was open in my lap and I had the, the trials going on on the TV. So I thought it was just so interesting because it was just such a similar situation. And so here I have on the TV real life while I'm reading in a book something fiction, but they just seemed like they were both real like it was just it was weird on top of that the writing in this book was really good just the way she said things the way she described things and I really liked the main character and her thoughts and her um, her personality I mentioned in far from the tree there was a little bit of LGBTQ plus representation but this book um, the main character is actually dating somebody she is the main character is by herself and then her um, girlfriend is gender fluid I think um, and having her own um, stuff that she's going through. So um, if you're looking for something that has more representation, there's also that in this book. So I think overall it kind of just like was just so relevant. That's all I can say. If I had to pick one word for this book, it's just relevant. And um, I think everyone should go read it. I've been recommending it to everyone. So if you haven't read it, please put it on your TBR for this year. And then the last book that I read in September was called Jar of Hearts. Again, this is another thriller that I think I found on somebody else's channel, so I thought I would give it a go, but I ended up giving it two stars. The best way I can describe this book is if you like Orange is the New Black without any humor to like cut the depressing parts in half, then maybe you'll like this book, but honestly it was so hard to read. This is a story about a woman who was arrested a few years after her friend has gone missing um, because her friend's bones are discovered. And so the main character is going to jail because she had a part in the murder. So we get to see her in jail a little bit and then we also get to see when she gets out the killer is out and about and is attacking people and trying to um, kind of get the attention of this main character. I'm trying to like pinpoint what I didn't like about this but I think it was just so many things that I can't even like put it into words. We kind of time hop between what happened when she was in high school with a friend and when she's in jail and then when she's out of jail and it kind of just fell all over the place. Um, there's also no trigger warning but this book has like detailed rape in it a few times and I don't know about you but I don't like to read like details about that. It was really hard like it made me stick to my stomach. The ending just really felt far-fetched too. Like I like a thriller where there is a huge twist but then it seems like okay I can suspend my disbelief a little bit and believe it. For example, and I won't give anything away, but A Simple Favor kind of did that, where it's like, okay, that could happen, it probably wouldn't, but at least it could happen. This book, not so much. It was just like, no, this is, this is too much. Maybe I'm just finding that I don't really like thrillers, I don't know. I'm gonna give like a few more tries to that genre, so if you have any suggestions for thriller, adult thriller books, let me know. And really quickly, I just want to share what movies and TV I've watched this month because I watched a bunch of stuff actually. For some reason, I was on this Anna Kendrick kick. So I saw um, Simple Favor in the theater, like I said, so good. I gave that five out of five stars. Definitely recommend it to anyone who liked Gone Girl. It was essentially Gone Girl, but just like so much better. <laughs> 
It was also really fast paced and it was funny. I was cracking up the whole time. The second thing I watched, I think it's on HBO, it's called Table 19 and it's about Anna, Anna Kendrick going to a wedding that her ex-boyfriend is at. She's seated at Table 19 which is like the reject table or like the losers. Um, so it's like a ragtag team of people at a wedding that are kind of learning about each other and stuff and they end up becoming friends. There was a twist in it that I thought was really clever and I just, I was laughing the whole time and it was just really good. So I feel like, I don't know why people are talking about this movie, but please go watch it if you have HBO. And then the third Anna Kendrick movie that I watched was Pitch Perfect 3. I went into this with like the lowest standards that you could possibly go into any movie because the third movie is always bad in any series. But I actually, I hate to say this, but I almost think it's my favorite out of all three. Like, obviously the first movie is gonna have a place in my heart forever, but this third movie had the best plot, I think. I don't know, the plot just kept me, kept my attention longer, whereas the first movie is more about, like, a relationship, which now I'm thinking about, that's kind of weird, because contemporaries are, like, my thing, so you would think I would like the first one better. Anyway, I gave it four stars. Andrew and I also watched Silence of the Lambs because I've been listening to the Story Grid podcast for a long time, and they talked about this movie on there back in the day. They were talking about like how the plot was really good and um, all of the foreshadowing that they did and like all of the things they did technically with the script and with the plot and all that. So I thought, you know, it's September, it's fall, let's watch a scary movie. So we watched it and I gave it five out of five stars. I thought it was really clever um, because I knew the plot ahead of time. I was able to like stop every while, like I was literally pausing it and going, oh my gosh, Andrew, they just foreshadowed with this and this and this. And so he was kind of like, oh my gosh stop pausing the movie because he's, I mean, he's seen it before though, so I wasn't ruining anything. But, um, but yeah, I was just getting so excited because I, I, I always try to watch movies to kind of like learn about story structure from that lens. So when I see something that is really good plot-wise or um, structure-wise, I get really excited. So <laughs> he was humoring me and letting me pause it every five minutes. But yeah, five out of five stars, it was just so well done. And then for TV, I haven't really been binging that much TV. I did watch The 100, I've been watching it while I'm on the treadmill, so I got through season 4 and I just started season 5 in October. I also found this other show that I'm not really sure why people aren't talking about. It's called Splitting Up Together and it's got the girl that plays Pam from The Office is the main character in this show. It's basically about two people that are getting a divorce but they can't really afford to sell their house or whatever and they have kids, so they take turns, the one parent's taking care of the kids, the other one's living in the garage, and then they switch every other week. But obviously they're still interacting because they live close and um, it's like a will they get to get back together or won't they type of thing and it is hilarious. <laughs> There's one part in the, the last episode of the season where they're singing um, the song If You Like Pina Coladas and it had me laughing so hard. We had to stop and rewind and watch it again because we were crying. We were <laughs> laughing so hard. I think it's also really great too because um, it's so relatable. I'm kind of at the stage now where I'm almost in my 30s and I'm like kind of feeling like really old, whatever you want to call it. And I feel like all the jokes they were making in this show was just like so relevant to things I'm experiencing now. But I definitely think you guys should go check out this show because I just want somebody to talk about it with. It's been a pretty good month I think. Thanks for watching guys. Don't forget to check out that reading vlog that I mentioned. You can also check out my Instagram. I've been posting regularly using my DSLR camera and trying to actually really get into Instagram. So please go follow me on there. I will see you guys in my next video. Bye.